last two weeks ago, we were talking about the five sheets. Hmm? The five sheets, the food sheet, the vital air sheet, mental sheet, intellectual sheet, and the bliss sheet. So the topic last time was the five sheets. We are trying to distinguish what the self is from the not self. So basically in life, you know, there are many things that we uh, try to distinguish or we call this in, in this context, Vedanta calls it Viveka. Viveka means discrimination, but not like this racial discrimination, gender discrimination, not like that, but discriminating what is the self and what is the not self. It's called Atma, Anatma, Viveka. Atma means the self, Anatma, the not self. How to distinguish between the two? And so there are very, there are various methods in our Upanishads, how to distinguish the self from the not self. So one such method we saw, the five sheets. And in that we moved from the grossest sheet to the subtlest sheet, from the food sheet all the way to the bliss sheet. And in all of these sheets, we saw what is in each sheet, what is the purpose of each sheet, and why am I not the sheets? We saw all of this in detail and we also had a discussion about it. The next or other way to discriminate is through the three bodies. So the first one was called Pancha Kosha Viveka. Discrimination of the five sheets is called Pancha Kosha Viveka. Now we will look at it from a different angle. Because sometimes, you know, the same thing seen through a different angle can trigger someone else another way. So therefore, the Upanishads are so compassionate that they've given us so many different ways to discriminate the self and the not self. So now we were looking at Sharira Traya Viveka or the three bodies. Hmm? So going from the self, the not self to the self through analyzing three bodies. Now, first of all, did we know that we have three bodies? <laughs> Those of you who were in self-enfoldment last time, I'm sure now you've, you know and you've heard this. So we have three bodies. First one is called sthula sharira or gross body. Next is what we call sukshma sharira or subtle body. And third is what we call karana sharira or causal body. So let's start with the first. And this can be mapped to the five koshas. So the three bodies can be mapped to the five koshas and we will do the mapping later. But first, let's see this process. The gross body. Now I'm referring to a text called Tattva Bodha. And this is a text we will study eventually, but this gives a very precise description of the three bodies, five sheets, etc. First of all, what is the body, the gross body? Now, the very word body in Sanskrit is called sharira. Sharira means shirya manatva sharira. That which decays is called body. So what a very beautiful de description of body. That which decays is called the body. What is this body made of? So first we look at what is the body made of? Pancha Mahabhuta or five elements. This body is made out of space, air, fire, water, earth. So what is it do I have here? It is five elements. That's it. It's five elements in a cooler packaging, in a different packaging, but it's still five elements. How is, there, how is it five elements? There's space in the body. There's definitely air in the body. We have all kinds of gas. There's definitely fire in the body. We have the digestive fire. There is water in the body and there's definitely earth in the body. So in the body, this is something you can directly see for yourself. It's not something we have to research. We have these five elements. You feel it in your entire body, it's there. So this body, as we say, is made up of food and the food is five elements. So this entire thing here is five elements. When it's on the Dinner table, it is called food. But when I take that food in, it is called body. That's it. 
huh? It's the same thing. Outside and inside, that's the only difference. But it's the same exact substance. So this is called the gross body. The material cause for the gross body is these five elements. Now, we have what is called the efficient cause. The efficient cause means what shapes the body. Okay, you're saying that the material cause of the body is five elements, but how come I have this kind of body and you have that kind of body? Why is it that we have different bodies? What shapes the body or the efficient cause is our karma. So why we have um, uh, an Indian body or a man's body or a woman's body, tall body or short body, all of this is according to our karma. Whatever karma we had, based on that, we get that kind of body. Because you know that when we take birth, right? Our birth is based on our desire, basically. Basically, in this life, let's say I had so many desires. Now, I may not be able to exhaust all of those desires in this body. I may not be able to do that. Therefore, I am born with another body with which I can exhaust my desires. Let's say I wanted to be a superstar bas basketball player this life, and I really, really wanted to be it. So, and I obviously can't because, you know, my, I'm not tall. So then therefore next life, I will become very, very tall. I will have a super tall body so I can shoot some hoops. Hmm? So our body depends on our karma. The shape of our body depends on our karma because that's the body that's required to exhaust our desires. Then we say, um, what is the function of this body? What's the function of this body? This body is bhogayatana. Bhogayatana means it's a counter for experience. So, you know, when I ask you, where do you live? Uh, what will you say? New York City, right? But where do we actually live? We live in a different kind of city. We live in the city of nine gates. Navadwara Pura. This body has nine gates. Nine gates means it has nine holes. Huh? So two in the eyes, two in the nose, two in the ears, one in the mouth. So seven here, and then one for um, excretion, one for reproduction. So nine total. So in the Bhagavad Gita, this body is called the city of nine gates because it is the, through this, the jiva or the individual can be contacted. So if you want to contact, let's say, Shubhani, you have to come to this body. Hmm? If I want to contact you, I have to go to your body. I can contact you through your body. I can touch you through your body. You, the jiva, the soul, are subtle. But if I want to touch you, if I want to contact you, how do I do that? Through the body. So this body is called bhogayatana. It's a counter to experience that jiva. So it is just an outer counter. So where do you live? Not in New York City. You live in your body. <laughs> okay, you live in a different kind of city. The city of nine gates. So bhogayatana. Hmm? Then, so this is the function of it. What are the components or parts of the body? That's easy. Head, neck, shoulders, arms, stomach, chest, back, legs, etc. These are the components or the parts of the body. Now, what is the dharma of the body? Hmm? The dharma, what, what does the body do? What, what, you know, what is its natural thing? What is very natural to it? What is something that it does? The dharma of the body is sixfold. Asti, it is. Jayate, it's born. Vardate, it grows. Viparanamate, it matures. Apakshiyate, it decays. And Vinashyati, it is destroyed. So the dharma of the body is, it, it is, it, it's born. It slowly grows, it matures, it decays, it dies. That's what the body does. 
So we cannot complain. How come, you know, my body is growing old? How come my hair is becoming white? How come, you know, now that I'm older, I move slower? You can't complain because that's what the body does. If the body goes through disease, how come my body is diseased? That's what the body does. <laughs> and if the body dies, that's what the body does. Hmm? That's the dharma of the body. It's called sharira. It comes, it goes. It's a sharira. It's just the outer covering. This much is called the gross body. Hmm? So the gross body is made, the material causes five elements. The efficient cause, what shapes it is our karma. And what is its function? It's the counter where we can contact that jiva and its components are the head, the neck, the shoulders, etc. And its dharma is to be born, to grow, to mature, to die. That's what it does. It's a body. And that is the first, first layer. And that body, if we map it to a sheep, is Annamaya Kosha. It's the same thing, but just looked at from a different angle. Okay? So now we move on. So this is just our outer covering. We go now a little bit inward okay little bit inward now we see what is called the subtle body or the sukshma sharira subtle body why is it called subtle why it's called subtle is because it's not manifest to the senses when something is manifest to our sense organs it's called gross that's why this body is called gross body because it's manifest. You can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it. But this subtle body is called subtle because it's not manifest to the senses. You cannot see it, hear it, smell it. You cannot do any of that. So it's called subtle body. It is also called linga sharira. Linga means indicator. It indicates the presence of life. Because a body could be just a dead body. But if the jiva is in that body, then there's life in that body. If that body has a subtle body, there's life in that body. If the body does not have a subtle body, then there is no life in that body. So it's called linga sharira. Now, what is this linga sharira or this subtle body? So first, we cannot see it. Okay, we cannot see it, but we know it's there. What is it made of? It's made of subtle five elements. So like the gross body is made up of gross five elements, the subtle body is made out of subtle five elements, space, air, fire, water, earth. All of this makes up the subtle body. And why do we have the kind of subtle body that we have? Also because of our karma. Based on our karma, this is the kind of subtle body that we have received. Now, what, what is the function of the subtle body? The subtle body is the experiencer of the world. Okay, And after we see the parts, this will become clear why this is the experiencer of the world. So if the gross body is the counter to get to the jiva, the actual experiencer of the world is that jiva, that subtle body. So let us see the components and then we will get to that part. What is the subtle body made of? 17 components, 17 distinct components, which you all have already seen in the sheets. Five is the five pranas. So five physiological functions. Prana, apana, dhyana, udana, samana. Prana, physio physiological function is respiratory. Then apana, the one that's responsible for excretion. Then dhyana, dhyana is uh, circulation. Udana is reverse processes. And samana is digestion. So this physiological functions 
which are in the pranamaya kosha, the five pranas are in the subtle body. So these pranas, you can't see them, but they're there. You know, you feel them. When we chant a mantra very uh, effectively, efficiently, you will see or you will feel the pranas in your body move a certain way. Hmm? So five pranas are there. So, and then after that, five, what we call karma indriyas. Karma indriyas, five faculties of action. So faculty of speech, faculty of grasping, of moving, of excretion, of um, reproduction. So why I am saying faculty is because it is not the hand that I'm talking about. The hand belongs to the gross body. But the faculty of grasping, that belongs to the subtle body. Not the legs belong to the subtle body. The legs belong to the gross body. But the faculty of walking, it belongs to the subtle body. So these faculties belong to the subtle body. So five organs of action, their faculties, five organs of perception, their faculties. So seeing, faculty of seeing, of hearing, of smelling, of tasting, of touching. So again, the physical eye belongs to the gross body, but the faculty of seeing is in the subtle body. So you will find that people do have faculty of seeing, but the eye is not working as well, so they're not able to see. Or people have the faculty of hearing, but the ear is not working so well, so they're not able to hear. Or sometimes when we have a cold, we do have the faculty of smelling, but the nose is clogged. Hmm? So these faculties, these subtle faculties of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, those belong to the subtle body. The actual, what we call golaka, aperture belongs to the gross body. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we have so far 15, five pranas, five organs of action, five organs of knowledge, and we have the mind and the intellect equipment. So if we total this together, that is 17 faculties, okay? So here in this particular sukshma sharira or subtle body, we have the pranamaya kosha, the vital air sheep, manomaya kosha, um, mental sheep, and vijnanamaya kosha, the intellectual sheep. All of these are in the subtle body. Now, sometimes they will say the subtle body has 19 components. And when they say 19, it's because they're expanding the mind and intellect further for these two components. And what are they? What we call chitta or memory and ahankar, which we call ego. So if they say 17, it means the chitta is with the mind, the memory is with the mind, and the ego is with the intellect. If they say 19, it means Mind, intellect, memory, ego. Hmm? So 17 or 19, both numbers are five. You'll find it slightly different in different books. And this is what it means. So this is the subtle body. It is, and we've discussed what the mind is, the seat of emotions. And we've discussed what the intellect is, that which is very discriminative and determined. Both are thoughts only. Hmm? When the thought, when the thought is in a function of emotion or doubt, that is called mind. When the thought is in a function of discernment and determined, that is called intellect. When the thought is in the function of recollection, remembering something, that is called memory or chitta. When the thought owns up itself and says, I am happy, I am sad, that is called the ego or what we call ahankara. Ahankaroti, the ahankara. Because it stamps I into everything. It says, I am this body. I am this person. I am a woman. I am a man. It stamps I into everything. When, when you get the thing that does the I stamp is called ahankara or 
ego. This is all the subtle body. Now, why do we say that the subtle body is the experiencer of the world? Because who truly experiences the world? Who truly experiences the world? Not the body. The body is inert. It's five elements. It cannot experience the world. Who truly experiences it is the subtle body. That subtle body is also called, you know, when, you, when we look at that ego, that ego is also called jiva. So when we hear the term jiva, 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 who's jiva? Jiva is that ego. So sometimes they say the jiva. So the subtle body, that jiva, that ego, is the one who experiences the world. So no matter what happens outside, in and around my body, my body's not experiencing it. It is the jiva that's experiencing it and labeling it as oh, it's, it's, it's good or it's bad. It's the jiva that's saying, oh, it's a pleasurable experience. Oh, it's not so pleasurable. It's the jiva that's saying, oh, I like it. I don't like it. It's not the body, it's the jiva. So the jiva is the experiencer of the world. And it is in this subtle body that so many things happen. Thoughts of the mind take place, like I'm having fun or no, this is too crazy or this is too hard or I don't know what to do or the intellectual talks, uh, thoughts take place. Yes, this is right. Yes, we must do this. No, we must not do this. And the owning up also takes place. So not only happy thoughts, but I am happy. That is also the subtle body. Not only sad thought, but I am sad. That is also the subtle body. So all of this kind of thinking happens in the subtle body. Hmm? This is called Sukshma Sharira. The next layer. So we go from the gross to the subtle. Now, before I go to the causal, I'm just going to pause and see if everything is clear or uh, if anybody has any questions. Okay, so this much, I know I know it's a lot of uh, terms and things like that, but it, it gets easier as we do it again and again and again, I promise. So the grass body, we finished the subtle body. Now we go to body number three, which is the causal body. What is this causal body? This causal body is called Karana Sharira, okay? Why is it called Karana Sharira? Karana means cause. Ha. Karana means cause. It is the cause of the two bodies. See, Karana Sharira or the causal body is not like the gross body, which is, you know, so manifest that you can see everything. And it's not like the subtle body where you can feel everything. It's a causal body because it's the seed of everything. It's the seed of everything. It's from where everything begins. It's the causal body. And this causal body is also called avidya or ignorance. Hmm? So it's not like a body body per se. It is ignorance. What do you mean ignorance? You see, because ignorance is the cause of all of these bodies, is the cause of all of this. First of all, this ignorance is of the nature of, I don't know my true self. I don't know who I am. I don't know that I am pure awareness, pure consciousness and fullness. I am Purna, I am Ananda, I am complete. I don't know that I am bliss. I don't know my real nature. Because I don't know, therefore, I think that I am this body, this mind, this intellect. I think that I am this. I think that I am all of this. And when I think that I am all of this, I spend my whole entire life trying to fulfill the body, to fulfill the mind, to fulfill the intellect, isn't it? So I am pure awareness. 
I don't know. I don't know that. And therefore, I think that, hey, this body is me. I think that, hey, this mind is me. This intellect is me. And because I think all of this, I desire to make all of this whole. I desire to have this body that I saw in some magazine. I want that kind of body. I desire that body. I desire to have that some kind of hair, some person's kind of hair. I desire that kind of hair. Or the mind, I desire to have such a focused, still, steady mind. I desire to have such a calm mind. I desire to have such a strong, strong mind. Good desires only, but still identifying with the mind. Or I desire just to have an amazing intellect, to be so incredibly brilliant and intelligent. I desire for all of that. And when I desire, when I start to desire, what happens is when we have a strong urge or desire, we cannot sit still. We have to move. We have to act. I want this kind of body. Okay, go to the gym. You go now, no, then now you can't go to the gym. They have that mirror thing. I saw that. And then you have to go in front of that mirror. I don't know what you would do in front of it, but you do that. Or you want a certain kind of mind. Okay, go pursue it. Do something, go for some class. You want a certain kind of intellect. Okay, do something. So whenever we have this strong desire, strong urge, we will go out in the world and we will act. And whenever we act, we will get a result. They cannot, there cannot be any action without a result. Every action has to have a consequence. And the result is nothing but another body, another experience. Another experience we have to go through, how? In another body, <laughs> in another method, in another way. So this karana sharira is the cause because it is because of ignorance that I am even wanting, I am identifying first of all with all of these equipments. Then I am wanting, I am craving to be full when I'm already full. Then I go out and I pursue the world and I act. And then I get the results and then I get another body again. And then I go through this whole process again. And I go through this whole process again. So karana sharira really means ignorance. It's the cause of all of this. Hmm? Now, what else is, about, is this karana sharira? Well, since when was I ignorant? I mean, what do you what do you call this ignorance? I mean, why is it there in the first place? Since, since when did it begin? This ignorance is there from beginningless time. It's beginningless time. And it's not a cop out because any ignorance that we have is from beginningless time. Since when, when were we ignorant of the Japanese language? Oh, I don't know. We we're always ignorant about it. Since when were we ignorant about the Russian language? I don't know. We were always ignorant about it. We can't tell when. It's from beginningless time. If you were in a dream and if you were sitting there and you were dreaming something, when was the beginning of your dream? Could you tell? No. The way we cannot tell when was the beginning of our dream, we cannot tell when was the beginning of this ignorance. It's just there, it's beginningless time. So it's called anadi. Hmm? Adi means beginning, anadi, that which doesn't have a beginning. All we know is that, look, it's there. It causes us to desire, it causes us to act, to get the result of actions, and it causes us to go around and round in this whole samsara. And what is this ignorance of? It's this ignorance of my real nature of who I am. And so, and this ignorance is also the, and we said it's the cause of both bodies. And that's why it's called Karana Sharira. And does it have a form? Does it have a shape? Nirvikalpakarupa. It doesn't have any form. It doesn't have any shape. It is just this ignorance. This is the third body what we call in Vedanta, causal body. Now, how, what do I do now with these bodies? You told me that there's these three bodies. What do I do with these bodies? First thing we need to do with these three bodies is understand 
what they are, layer, layer after each layer. The second thing is know that we're not the three bodies. We have nothing to do with the three bodies. So we map out the sthula sharira or the gross body is the anna, annamaya kosha, the food sheet. Sukshma sharira is called the pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya kosha, the vital air sheet, the mental sheet, the intellectual sheet. You map it out. The causal body or the karana sharira is the anandamaya kosha, that bliss sheet. You map these two things together. The way the same explanation we said why we are not the five sheets, in the same way we understand that we are not the three bodies. Because especially for the gross and the subtle body, they are changing. They are changing. And even the causal body, that degree of ignorance is changing. But I am something that is absolutely changeless. Another thing we saw is they are seen. They are seen means they are experienced. But I am the one who is illumining all of those experiences. So they are experienced, yes, but I illumine their experiences. Not only that, but we saw they are inert. Now you really see how they're inert because they're made out of five elements. Five gross elements for the gross body, five subtle elements for the subtle body. And this ignorance is, it's a seed. It is, it is inert. It cannot know itself. Hmm? In addition to all of that, we also call these bodies my. We say this is my body. We say this is my mind, my thoughts, my being, my person, my ignorance. We call it my. And whatever we call my cannot be I. If I say this is my bottle, this is not I, it's my bottle. Whatever is my cannot be I. So the very fact that we say my means it's not me. And that's why we cannot be these three bodies. We have nothing to do with them. Hmm? We are that pure awareness, which is beyond the five sheets and which is different from the three bodies. I'm going to pause for a moment to make sure everybody's now. There is one more analysis that we need to see. So we saw the five bodies, we saw, saw the five sheets. We saw the three bodies. Now we are going to look at it from a different point of view. Okay? Now we're going to look at it from the vision of the three states. Hmm? So now I hope you're clearly seeing how I'm not the five sheets. I'm not the three bodies. Now we're going to see that I don't have anything to do with the three states. Okay, now what are these three states? There's a lot in this talk today, so you might have to listen to it again. <laughs> okay, three states, waking, dream, deep sleep, what we call Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti. Today I'll just give you a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm you so much. Waking state. What is this waking state? Okay, very beautifully. This kind of viveka or discrimination, we saw the first one was panchakosha, five sheets, sharira three bodies. This is called avasthatraya, three states. Hmm? Waking, dream, deep sleep. Now, it's really funny, but when we go through life, we never think that it can be divided into three states. We just think, oh yeah, life, that's it. Just like we never thought that we had three bodies, gross, subtle, causal, whoever thought that there's something like that. The same way we don't really think that there's three states every day that we go through. Waking state is when we experience the sense objects through our sense organs. That is called waking state. Very simple. Hmm? 
when through my sense organs i am experiencing this world because in dream we're also experiencing through our sense organs but we're not experiencing gross sense objects we are experiencing subtle sense objects so when through my sense organs i am experiencing gross sense objects that state is called waking state hmm? so right now i hope we are all in the waking state and we are all awake that is one state and the one who is identified with the waking state is called waker and although the gross subtle and causal bodies are all experienced in the waking state the main experience is of the gross body hmm so the it's 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 like the gross body is the one that plays in the waking state it the main main things come to the gross body in the waking state so this state we are all familiar with because we experience it every day now we go slightly deeper to dream state now this is also something that we experience not necessarily every day but we experience it what is this dream state exactly this dream state is whatever we saw or heard or experienced in waking state when that forms a deep impression it comes to our dream state okay so whatever we saw we heard we experienced in the waking state but maybe for some reason we could not express it out you see in waking state we have the mind the intellect they're fully alert they're fully alert so you know we edit ourselves we want to say something but we're like oops uh, i probably shouldn't say that or we think something oops uh, i probably shouldn't think that we have that editing capacity in the waking state whether we use it or not that's a different question but in the waking state we have that editing capacity because the mind and the intellect are fully fully there hmm what happens in dream state is the mind intellect portion is only partially alert partially active hmm it's like the intellect doesn't really work so in dream state i experience the unedited version so whatever it is that i saw or heard or experienced in the waking state and it formed such a deep impression in me then that unedited version will come in my dream i wanted to express something i couldn't i wanted to experience more i couldn't so whatever whatever it was there that i was holding back or editing in my waking state unedited it will come in the dream so what is coming in my dreams is nothing but a reflection of my vasanas my reflection of my deep impressions which i could not pursue that comes in dream and it is unedited because the mind intellect equipment partially there it's not really there it's not functioning and also therefore you will find such a uh, like jibber jabber of things you know you will be in some country with some other person whom you never even met or it could be a half monkey a half uh, animal a half human being that you're talking to it's it's all all kind of just a real weird thing because it's a mix up of everything hmm? that is called dream state that's called dream state now in this dream state the subtle body and the causal body are both experienced the gross body not experienced because in dream state you cannot bring your gross body with you there <laughs> you cannot you have to leave it but who has the main main uh, sport or who has the main main activity is the subtle body so in the dream state is where the subtle body identification is predominant like in the waking state the gross body identification is predominant 
in the dream state, the subtle body identification is predominant. And this is what we call dream. And they say dreams only can last maybe two, two and a half minutes. But so many things can happen in a dream. But this is why we dream what we dream. And this is what happens in dream. So this is the dreamer. So first we saw the waker who's experiencing the world with their sense organs. They experience the sense objects. Then we see or we saw the dreamer who through whatever was experienced in waking, when it expresses in the mind in that state, unedited, that is called dream. Now we will see the deep sleeper. So the third part, the third state is that deep sleep. Now we all love this state. What happens in this state? The mind, the intellect equipment are completely dormant. Completely dormant. And I know nothing. We, we don't know anything in deep sleep state. But yet when we wake up, we have that experience that... Ah, I slept well. I slept nicely. We had, we know that there, we know that it was there. We know it was there. We know we went through something, but what it is, we don't know. Because at that state, I experienced nothing. My mind and intellect equipment weren't really there. Huh? So I, I couldn't know anything because my mind and equip my uh, mind and intellect equipment weren't really there. I couldn't know anything. But when I wake up, and my mind and intellect again come into full bloom, I, I, it was just peace. I felt something peaceful. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens in deep sleep. And in deep sleep, the gross body is not experienced, nor is the subtle body experienced, but the causal body is the one that's experienced. That ignorance, that state of ignorance. I know nothing. Hmm? And therefore, the primary identification of the deep sleeper is with the causal body. Hmm? So the sleep is a very, very interesting state. We really study it. but Because we're not there, but it was experienced. The ego is not there. You don't feel your sense of I. You don't feel the sense of I am this, I am that. You don't feel anything. But yet you know you're there. That is some kind of state. And that is the, what we call deep sleep state. Or the deep sleeper. Now, so okay, you have these three distinct states. You have this waking, you have this dream, and you have these deep sleep states. And you go through these states every, every single day. So what? So what? So what is a very good question because the waker gets lost, is not there in the dreamer. Huh? The waking me, waking Shubhani, let's say, when I dream, the waker's gone. <laughs> waker's gone. And the dreamer is a different, whole different identity, isn't it? And in deep sleep, the dreamer's gone. The deep sleeper is just that dormant, I know nothing. So, and then when you come back to wake, the deep sleeper's gone. So you and I have these three distinct identities everywhere, every day, and each identity disappears into the next state. Each identity disappears into the next state. The waker is completely gone in the dreamer. The dreamer is completely gone in the deep sleeper. And the deep sleeper is completely gone in the waker. So these three identities are gone. They go. And they come. But yet, in and through these three states, there is something that's always there. 
And that something is pure awareness. So in that waking state, when my ego, when my mind intellect equipment are completely active and fully blown, consciousness is there. In dream state, when that mind intellect equipment is partially there, not part, just partially there, consciousness is there. In that deep sleep state, when that mind intellect equipment are completely dormant, consciousness is there. And this mind intellect equipment, it, it fluctuates, it blooms into expression and then it goes dormant. It blooms into expression, it goes dormant and it keeps changing in every, every single state. But there is something that stays there the same all throughout. That is called consciousness. That is called awareness. That is called Atma. Hmm? So then that is you. So you're not this waker. You're not the waking. We, we think we are the waker. We think we are the waker, but please see we are only awake for maybe what, 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day. We're only awake that much. And we think we are the waker, but we're not the waker. We're not the dreamer and we're not the deep sleeper. We're that which illumines all of those three states. Waking state is just a state. It is not your life. Waking state, it's called waking state because it's a state. It's called dream state because it's a state. It's called deep sleep state, it's a state. Imagine if you were, let's say, let's say you were 50 years old. Let's just say you're 50 years old. Huh? So 50 years old you are. Now let us say every day you sleep how many hours? Maybe six hours, seven hours, yeah? So every day, one fourth of my life is sleeping, hmm? right? So in your 50 years or so, what happens? How many years of that is in deep sleep? How many years of that? A quarter, let's say. 10, 12, 12 years or so in deep sleep. So your, your 50 years of your life, you didn't live all of them. <laughs> you spent like a good 10, 12 years sleeping. Because you're not just the waker. You're not the waker. You're not the dreamer. You're not the deep sleeper. You're that which illumines all of them. That's called Atma. Hmm? There's a question here that says, what about talking in your sleep or sweet sleepwalking? How is that accounted for? That's what we call in-between states. So sometimes we can also fluctuate in between states. But the point is that identity is not there in another state. Okay. All right. I think we stop here with this. But now let us see if there are any questions. So Chandni was saying about uh, premonition. So Chandni, can you... So that premonition, you don't go through in deep sleep state. Hmm? That kind of feeling where you saw something and that actually happens, that could be very deeply in contemplation you could have in waking state. That also you could have in dream state, but you won't have that in deep sleep state. Hmm? Because deep sleep state is when everything is completely at rest. My sense organs, my mind, everything is completely, completely at rest. That's called deep sleep. Any other questions or thoughts? Okay. 
All right. We'll just spend a few moments then sitting quietly, just contemplating this. Hmm? So just sit straight. Just take a deep inhale, exhale. Just take a few breaths. Mano bodhyaham kar chittani naham na chashrotra chitve na chakrana nekre na chakyoma bhumir na tejo na vayu chitananda rupaha shivoham shivoham Shidananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham Keep your eyes closed. What I said was just a stotra from Adi Shankaracharya. This is just one verse. It's from Nirvana Shatka. We will also learn a little bit about it. It's very beautiful. The first verse says, Mano buddhya hamkara chitta ninaham. I'm not the mind, not the intellect, not memory, I'm not the ego. Natashrotra jifwe. I'm not the faculty of hearing or tasting. Natashrana nekri. Or smelling or seeing. Nacha vyoma bhumir natejo nabhai. Nor am I the five elements. But what is my true nature? Chidananda rupaha shivoham shivoham. My true nature is that of pure consciousness and bliss, which is also known as Shiva. Shiva also means auspiciousness. Aham. That pure consciousness I am that pure bliss I am. So just take a few moments in silence just to digest whatever we've spoken about today. I'll chant the first verse again now that you Mano bodhya hankar chitta ninaham na chashrotra chitve na chakrana nitre na chakyoma bhumir na tejo na vayu chidananda rupaha shivu Hum shivu hum chidananda rupaha shivu hum shivu
शांति 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 हरि ही ओम श्री गुरुदेव हरि ही ओम Hello everyone. Chandni, I'll answer your question next week. Okay. Please seriously think about whatever we talked about today. Mm -hmm. It will give you great sense of peace if we're able to really, truly understand.